Listening to some groovy tunes and reading a good book sounds so relaxing right now. Do you know any places nearby? I do, but if you want to find out where to do that in the Philadelphia area, you're going to have to keep watching. Later, we'll take you on an in-depth tour inside and outside the city to show you where to find the best places to hang out with family and friends. That sounds like fun to me, so stick around as we head just next door. Hello and welcome to Just Next Door, the show where we find interesting places in and around the Philadelphia area for people of all ages to enjoy. I'm Mike Holden. And I'm Leah Giles. On today's episode, we have a lot to show you. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started. To begin our show, we're going to take a trip to Doylestown in Bucks County, famous for its many boutiques and shops. Doylestown has so much to offer, including the cultural district, a theater, and much, so much more. Let's see what makes this place so special. Welcome to Doylestown, Pennsylvania. This small town 45 minutes north of Philadelphia has everything you need from clothes to restaurants to a farmer's market and even a toy store that helped me figure out what the best toy to get is. That is the number one question, especially now during the holiday season. What's the, what's the hot game? What's the hot thing? And my kind of boring response to that is it depends because what is appropriate for a baby or a toddler is certainly not what uh, you know, a grade school, high school age person would want to play with. Across the way though, I've got a big Lego section. So building is always kind of this evergreen kind of category. Being a local business in Doylestown also has many perks. It's such a pleasure to have my former little customers come back. Um, so this first wave of customers are all in college, grad school, some have just been graduating, and I'm anticipating when they get married and bring their children. I'm really looking forward to that sec second generation of Busy Bee customer. My next stop was to Central Books, a used bookstore that is also locally owned and very happy to be part of the Doylestown community. You know, it's like living on Sesame Street essentially. <laughs> I love it because I live two blocks away, so I actually walk to work a lot of the time. And, um, you know, I put those books out, uh, since I don't really have display windows or anything, I put those books out on the front edge of the porch. And I've been doing that for, I don't know, at least 15 years or more. And I have never had a book walk away. So um, it does feel kind of magical here that it's more like Disney World or something. We hope you enjoyed this short tour of Doylestown and plan to visit very soon. What an amazing place for family and friends to hang out. Doylestown has a lot to offer and so many fun things in store for anybody looking for a way to pass the time. Are there any more places around Philadelphia that sell good books? I heard from Fellini that there's a local historical landmark bookstore in Center City called Giovanni's. Let's go check it out. Located in the neighborhood at 12th and Pine Streets, Giovanni's Room is an LGBT-focused bookstore. Giovanni's has been around since, uh, uh, the, I guess it's one of the oldest gay bookstores in the country. It's been around since the 70s. I'm, I'm not sure, 73 or 74 it started. And um, uh, it was owned by a, a number of different people over the years, but uh, Ed, uh, Ed Herman, I think, was the last one to own it. and. Um, when he retired, Philly AIDS took it over, and th then I started to volunteer. I just retired from uh, uh, a business that I was in, and um, so I started to volunteer here, and I've been here s maybe seven years, or at least anyhow, since Philly AIDS took it over. Giovanni's room consists of both staff and volunteers. There's like art projects. As you can see, a lot of it, well, most of the tags are like handwritten, hand-drawn, and we have a bunch of different creative volunteers. We're also a thrift shop, 
we're under affiliates thrift so we get thrifted items kind of curated it from over there so there's clothing and knickknacks brick and brack but we mostly specialize in books and queer books specifically if you go to queerbook.com you can uh, order any book that you want from us it doesn't have to be gay it just it any book for more information on Giovanni's room visit their website at queerbooks.com or follow their Instagram at P-A-T at Giovanni's Room. Wow, that looks like so much fun. I had no idea it was a thrift store, too. I'm going to have to check it out sometime. Where to next, Mike? For this next segment, we're going to head down the street to Repo Records, located in South Philadelphia. If you're looking for a place to listen to some records and rock out, then you've come to the right place. Repo Records has everything from flyers, shirts, and tickets for venues. Check it out. We sell records. We sell vinyl. We sell CDs. We sell cassette tapes. While Repo Records on South Street may seem like your run-of-the-mill record store, it is much, much more. Uh, we got a lot of local musicians uh, sell their stuff in here, local artists. Uh, we do a lot of like giveaways for shows and stuff, so if you're into that, you can do that too. Along with selling records and merchandise, Repo Records also promotes local concerts and music venues. They even have a spot where you can enter for a chance to win tickets for a variety of different shows. But if you'd rather enjoy music in the comfort of your own home, Repo Records truly has it all. They also have a collection of hundreds of different records to choose from, spanning all different genres and prices. They have a full CD collection with decades worth of artists. They also sell posters, pins, shirts, books, and other random old stuff. So swing on by to Repo Records for all your music needs. Wow, my head is still rocking and rolling. If you're looking for a good place to enjoy a coffee and listen to some music, you're in luck. This is exactly what you're looking for. Next, we're off to Milk Crate Cafe, located off of Girard Ave. Take a look. Located in Fishtown, right off Girard Avenue, is Milk Crate Cafe. This record-themed cafe just might surprise you with all it has to offer. From coffee and food, to records, to happy hour on weeknights, this spot has it all. Many come here for a calming place to get work done or grab a cup of coffee. They offer an extensive menu of food and drinks, so they're sure to have something for everybody. They even have a takeout window placed outside for convenience. And for people looking to relax after a long day of work, you can swap the caffeinated beverage for one of their many specialty beers and cocktails at happy hour. Once you have your beverage, you can then head downstairs where you can see how the cafe gets its name. Down there, you will find records and CDs stacked in old milk crates. You can find an array of music from the classics to new arrivals, with artists ranging from the Beatles to Beyonce. Not only does the store sell records, but they also buy records and host trading events for those interested. So make sure you head on down to the Milk Crate Cafe for some music, coffee, and a good time. Wow, that looks cool. I need to stop by one day for sure. Food, drinks, and music. Sounds like a great mix. What an interesting place, but after all this music, I think we need to take a short break. When we return, we'll be doing an interview with a special guest that really knows a lot about Philadelphia. You won't want to miss it. taught me everything about freedom, only not like you think. It taught me how easy it is to lose your freedom, how meth can take control until you find yourself doing whatever meth tells you to do. Before you get there, while you still can, take a stand for yourself. If you feel yourself losing your freedom to meth, Ask for help. Accept the help. It's worth it. You have the power to be truly free and be the person you want to be. I know. I'm Jan, and I'm free from meth. 
If you or someone you know is struggling with meth, call 1-800-662-HELP for 24-hour free and confidential treatment referral. Learn more at samsagovernor slash meth. Welcome back. Today we have with us Fran Dunphy, the head coach of the LaSalle men's basketball team. Coach Dunphy is a LaSalle alum and played basketball here for Tom Golo from 1967 through 1970. He's most notably known for his coaching career at Temple, Penn, and LaSalle, being the winningest coach in Big Five history. So coach, thanks for joining us today. Um, start off, how have times changed from when you were first walking around campus to when you're looking at it now? How much time we have on this show? <laughs> it's changed dramatically. Yeah, I'm sure. None of this South Campus was here. Uh, we played our basketball games at the Palestra. We had a practice facility where the best, where the bookstore is now. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, that's just some of the changes. Uh, many of the things that are different uh, in every aspect here, whether it be the classroom buildings or the athletic facilities. Most of this stuff was not here. We were. It was, it was kind of a, a, a different existence back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So what would you say, like, some of your favorite spots to go <clears throat> on campus and in Philadelphia when you were a student? Yeah, when I was a student, I'll tell you what we did. Every, every night we wound up at Explorer's Den for a cheesesteak <laughs> or a hoagie or something. Our they still have good All food. that spectacular. Uh, but the food was great. The camaraderie was great. We enjoyed hanging around with each other. We didn't go off campus and go downtown very much every once in a while. Uh, not the same amount of things to do as there is today, but the movies and uh, just kind of hanging out a little bit, but uh, didn't do a whole lot. Okay. So what are your, what are your, some of your favorite places now, would you say? Some around, of my favorite places now? Around Philly and on campus. Yeah, I think any time I can get down to South Philly and eat some good Italian food is great. Uh, I do enjoy the theater. For example, Les Miserables is at, uh, at downtown. I would love to see it if I could get Josh Nickelberry to give me off a day of practice. Maybe I could get down there and watch it. Uh, so th those are some things. We have some other favorite restaurants down there and uh, downtown, which are great. But uh, I would say Passion Avenue and uh, the Italian food is probably my favorite. So as a win winningest coach in Big Five history, you've earned the name Mr. Big Five. Um, you've had some memorable moments. What are some that stand out to you the most over your career? Well, the, the, the thing as a player probably was we played Villanova. We were ranked like second or third mm -hmm. in the country at the time, and Villanova was ranked seventh or eighth. Yeah. We played at the Palestra. We win the game, which was a great experience for us. Uh, so that, as a player, that's probably as, as much a highlight as I've ever had in, in college basketball. As a coach, uh, when I was coaching at Penn, we had a 27-point lead, and we lost it. Uh, and that was the most memorable game that I ever coached in. And I would have tri sold my soul to the devil for two more <laughs> points then, but I would never trade it now because it's a part of who I yeah. am, and, and we learned a lot from it. Definitely. So as a La LaSalle alum, how does it feel to come back now and coach? Yeah, it, it's surreal, to be honest with you. Uh, it wasn't something that I planned. This is not something I campaigned for. Uh, the university asked if I would do this, and, and the fact that I could come back and s be with these guys on the court, which is the most fun for me, uh, to fuss at them on a, on a practice schedule like Josh Nickelberry, I can yell at him for not playing a good enough defense, things like that. So, but it's fun. It's fun to be back, and uh, you know, I want to I want to do the best job that I can for this institution, which gave me so much. So after Temple, you were retired for a couple years. What was kind of the process of coming out of retirement and coming back to your alma mater to coach for LaSalle? Yeah, I'm not, I don't know that there was a whole lot of process, Mike. It was just jumping back mm -hmm. in right away to try to get these guys together. Some guys left yeah. due to the transfer portal. We mm -hmm. got a couple guys in due to the transfer portal. We recruited a, a few other kids uh, from international world. And so it's just been, uh, it's been, a, it's been crazy, hectic, yeah. but fun. Yep. Um, so when you're not coaching or working at LaSalle, what do you do in your free time? Well, if I have enough free time, I, I love playing golf with three of my knucklehead buddies, and we go out there and just the camaraderie of golf is awesome. I enjoy that. Uh, occasionally, we'll get down to Jersey Shore and uh, hang out with some friends there. I have two grandsons. I like hanging out with them. Uh, I like reading. I like watching TV. 
saw a show on Katie Couric the other night, which was just awesome. And, uh, and I learned a lot from the TV world. So I think you guys are in for a great career. And <laughs> you're going to learn much. Thank you. Um, so what advice do you have for young athletes who are starting to, just starting their college sports career? You know, I think the, the only advice is, you know, say to yourself, what is the right thing to do? Mm -hmm. And do that. Work hard. Be the first guy out on the court. Be the last guy to leave. Do the very best you can with, uh, with everything that you're trying to do, whether it's school, whether it's basketball, whether it's on campus. Do the best you can and create friends. As a matter of fact, gather them. Yeah. Collect new friends because you're going to learn much from them. Yep, that's great advice. Um, how, how would you say your experience here at LaSalle prepared you for your career, the future? Yeah, I think LaSalle taught me well. Uh, I think the Christian Brothers education is an outstanding one. Uh, and I met some great people here when I was at LaSalle, from the faculty to all the staff that I used to hang around with as well, and many of my classmates. I still hang around with so many of my classmates and my teammates as well. So I think it prepared me greatly for what I was about to face. However, I had no idea what I was going to face. I got plenty of things that were a surprise to me, and, and I think LaSalle gave me the great foundation that I needed. So returning back, back to coaching, what's your kind of expectations you have for the season in your first year at LaSalle? Well, uh, I don't know what our expectations are. I want our players to play the best that they can every single game. And as a coach, I want them to be as prepared as I possibly can be, have them be. Uh, and that's the one thing that you worry about when you go to bed at night, not that you sleep much, but you're worried that you have done a good job preparing your team. Yep. Perfect. We want to thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to head outside and look at the beautiful scenery of Philadelphia. Thank you, Coach. to that secret place, that spot that only you know about, and instead of what you came for, you found this. What would you do? Would you stop and give us some thought? The truth is, all drug use comes with risk. Before those risks become real, before drugs turn your life upside down, Before drugs take their toll on you and your family. Know that there is help. You can quit. If you or someone you love is struggling with drug use or prescription drug misuse, call 1-800-662-HELP for 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral. Or go to samhsa.gov slash know the risks. Welcome back to Just Next Door. We're going to take a step further out of the city and stop by Peddler's Village, a historical hotspot with old stores and many events and festivals. Let's take a look. Peddler's Village was founded in 1962 by Earl Jameson. This 18th century style shopping village is located in Bucks County, about 40 miles from Center City, Philadelphia, and was recently ranked third among most visited attractions in the Philadelphia region with 2 million visitors annually. Peddler's Village is home to 65 unique stores located on 42 acres of beautiful gardens and walkways. I stopped in the Hosco Bookshop where they have an array of book options for any age. Then, when you're hungry, stop by the number of food and drink options they have available. Whether you want to sit down for a nice meal or just get a snack to bring home, Peddler's Village has it all. Peddler's Village is also home to plenty of unique independent retail shops. Whether you like sports, crafts, or anywhere in between, Peddler's Village has it all. Peddler's Village is also known for their events put on year-round, including Scarecrows in the Village, which was going on while I was there, and I got to see some very cool scarecrows. 
Giggleberry Fair is home to an 100 year old carousel and it is perfect for kids. Peddler's Village has it all for any age and is somewhere you want to visit when you are in the Philadelphia area. That looks like a fun spot to me. There's a lot to do and so many old shops to choose from. What more could you ask for? Yeah, I mean, I've been going to Peddler's Village ever since I was little, and, you know, it's, it's one of those places where no matter what age you are, you know, you can enjoy it, from Giggleberry Fair for kids or even just Cock and Bowl for the restaurants. It's just, it's got it all, and it's just one of those places. It's not in Philadelphia, but it's just so close that even if you live in the Philadelphia area, it's just easy to get to. It's one of those places that you should check out sometime for sure. Well, that was a lot of fun, but I just want to head back into the city and see more of what's just next door. You're in, you're in luck because we're going to take a trip on a boat. On a boat? I didn't mean to say on a boat, but the Boathouse Row, located on the Sukor River. Fairmount Rowing Association was founded in 1877 and is located at number two on Boathouse Row. This club holds the Quaker City Masters Regatta and is also home to the rowing programs of LaSalle University, Wharton Crew, and Episcopal Academy. Crescent Boat Club was founded in 1867 and is located at number 5 on Boathouse Row. Today, the Crescent Boat Club contributes to the rowing community and the Schuylkill Navy. It houses two rowing programs, Thomas Jefferson University and Roman Catholic High School. Bachelor's Barge Club was founded in 1853, is the oldest continuously operated rowing club in the U.S. and is located at number 6 on Boathouse Row. Bachelor's Barge Club houses Drexel University. University Barge Club was founded in 1854 by 10 members of UPenn's freshman class. They later joined forces with the Philadelphia Barge Club in 1871 and became number 8 on Boathouse Row. Malta Boat Club was founded in 1860 by the Sons of Malta. In 1865, Malta joined the Schuylkill Navy when it purchased Clubhouse No. 9 on Boathouse Row. Malta's current membership is composed of businessmen, doctors, lawyers, educators, priests, and students. College Boat Club was founded in 1872 by the school students and sits at number 11 on Boathouse Row. Its membership consists entirely of past and present rowers of UPenn. Undyne Barge Club was founded in 1856 and is located at number 13 on Boathouse Row. In October of 1858, the Undyne Barge Club and eight other clubs organized the Schuylkill Navy of Philadelphia to govern and promote amateur rowing on the river. Philadelphia Girls Rowing Club was founded in 1938, is the oldest active women's club in the U.S., and is located at number 14 on Boathouse Row. The club was founded because no other boathouses on the Schuylkill would allow members of the weaker sex to join their clubs. Boathouse Row is a great place to visit in the city, whether you're sitting with your friends, running or biking, or wishing your school good luck. That looked like so much fun, Leah. Did you see any races while you were down there? I didn't see any races that were going on, but I did see LaSalle's crew team walking in and getting ready to start their practice. I also did see uh, LaSalle College High School's crew team working out there, which was cool too. And then I did see LaSalle College High School on the water and they were rowing and getting instructions from their coaches, so that was cool to see. Awesome. Sticking with the beautiful outdoor scenery, we're heading to Worcester Park. With tons of open space and many activities, Worcester Park is a place for the whole family to enjoy. Hey, what's up? It's me, your boy. A couple weeks ago, the producers of a show asked me to shoot a video for them. So today, we'll be going to Worcester Park, just next door to LaSalle. Alright, so you're probably wondering what I'm doing in the middle of the woods. And I'll tell you. So apparently the show is just next door, which is really restricted. Because there's only a handful of buildings that border LaSalle. And let me tell you, the people who live there do not appreciate people showing up unannounced with these giant cameras. I mean, this one guy put out this giant, you know, it doesn't matter. Apparently, I also need an interview. Now, I don't see anybody around. Uh, I'll look around some more, and once I find people, I'll cut the recording back on. Yes, I found some people. It looks to be a family having lunch or something. I don't know. But I got my sound bite. Let's go. Well, that really throws a wrench in things. I was told that all I need to do to get an interview was say, Hey, I'm shooting a video for class. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? And I said, I think I, I think I said that. Did I say that? Hang on, let me check. Okay, so it turns out that I did not say that. Unfortunately, uh, the producer said that they need this video by 3. It is currently 2.45.
And I still gotta edit this. Uh, thanks so much for watching. It's been Luke, guys, and I'll see you next time. And which way did I come from? Did Luke say he was lost? I think he did. Can we can we check to make sure he's okay? Yeah, let's try to stay away from parks from now on. Where to next? Well, too bad, because guess what? We're going to another park, but this one has concert venues, so hopefully nobody will get lost. I come to this park a lot, not to walk dogs like most people. <laughs> um, I, I read, I usually like put a blanket down, and I just, it's, I oftentimes bike ride didn't today, but I usually do. So I just bike here and I just chill. I have picnics. Sometimes I'm with a friend or my partner. Um, and sometimes I'm just by myself. It's just a really nice place to come and chill and connect and be in nature. The fall and the spring, I come a lot. Um, like as soon as the weather breaks, I'm here. Um, I'm even here in the winter sometimes just to get out and be in the sunshine. I just love nature, so I would just rather be in nature, and I just think this park is such a sweet spot. I have been coming to this park for, oh gosh, maybe six years. Um, I actually got married in this park. And um, I do know that they do um, some really lovely um, concert events in, in August and, and July. And uh, I had the pleasure of going to a couple of those this year, too. Um, I think that the people that are here, like, really do a lot of, um, like, good upkeep of this park. And, um, yeah, and sometimes I battle the dogs that try to jump on me. <laughs> I love a nice day at the park. No money needs to be spent in order to have a great time. Now that's my type of outing. Well, that does it for this episode of Just Next Door. Don't forget to check us out on social media. You can find us on Twitter at LaSalle TV Philly or follow us on Instagram at LaSalle TV. We would love to hear your comments and suggestions. For all of the crew, for all of the Just Next Door crew, I'm Leah Giles. And I'm Mike Holden. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Just Next Door.